conduits of this broadcast, the various uh, television stations, we appreciate that you are able to bring this message to all our people. We are today giving a report by the economic cluster of government on the measures that were announced by the President of the Republic of South Africa, His Excellency Cyril Madamela Ramaphosa. Without any further ado, we will call. Without any further ado, we will call upon the Minister of Tourism, who is also the chair of our government economic cluster, to read a statement of the cluster on the implementation of the measures that were announced by the president in the economic relief side. Thank you very much, uh, Minister uh, Kubai Kubane. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Mtembu. Good afternoon to the listeners, to the viewers, to my fellow colleagues and co-chairperson of the Economy Cluster who has joined us as well, Minister Mangasha, with other ministers who are here. We have a statement on behalf of the Economy Cluster of Cabinet. The President announced the national lockdown on the 23rd of March, a difficult decision in whose absence the health, social, economic consequences would have been far worse today. The declaration enabled our nation to have an integrated and coordinated response to deal with the spread of coronavirus and set into motion our disaster management mechanism, focusing on preventing and reducing the outbreak of the virus. Government has accordingly decided that beyond Thursday 30th April, we should begin a gradual and phased recovery of economic activity, which will be implemented through a deliberate and cautious approach to the easing of current lockdown restrictions associated with current level five classification as explained by the president on 23rd April 2020. In an undertaking the risk adjusted approach we have sequenced and phased in key sectors and priority areas with a view to deepening the fight against COVID-19 whilst rebuilding the economy. The phased in approach will affect key economic sectors and drivers as well as promote human development and well-being. It had been expected that in some cases, a sector would not be able to return to full production during level four or even at lower levels while the risk of infections remain. If government does not coordinate the response, the risk is a, sorry, if government does not coordinate the response, there is a risk of more job losses and the contracting of the economy to unprecedented levels. And it is in that context that the current funding or disaster response through reallocation reprioritization and emergency funds must be also be seen. This plan spans over six to eight months because we believe that the curve peak will probably arrive in September 2020. Following the president's address on the 21st April 2020, the National Treasury has issued second set of measures aimed at assisting individuals and businesses through the economic hardship brought by the pandemic. These measures consist of fiscal and support instruments to help our economy recover, overcome the severe impact on production, markets, trade, and employment. The intervention includes skills development levy holiday, fast tracking of value added tax refunds, three month deferral for filing and first payment of carbon tax liabilities, deferral of payment of excise taxes on alcoholic beverages 
and tobacco products, an increase in the expanded employment tax incentive amount, an increase in the proportion of tax to be deferred and in the gross income threshold for automatic tax deferrals, increasing the deduction and a deduction available for donation to the Solidarity Fund, adjusting pay as you earn for donation made through the employer, expanding access to living annuity funds, further support for firm Sorry, further support for firms will come from a 200 billion loan scheme for small and medium sized businesses. The National Treasury is finalizing the details and should be ready by the end of this week, as indicated by the Minister of Finance last week, that they will announce by end of this week. On the mining sector, the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy has issued a directive to all mining operations to ensure safe start-up procedures as the sector prepares to ramp up to 50% of capacity. The directive is issued to ensure compliance with Section 5, Subsection 1 of the Mine Health and Safety Act, Act Number 29 of 1996, as amended, which requires that every employer must, as far as reasonably, pra practicably provide and maintain a safe working environment. These measures in line with the latest disaster management regulation should include rigorous screening of all employees, including contractors, prior to accessing the mine, testing of employees with symptoms of COVID-19, adequate social distancing, provision of quarantine facilities for employees showing signs of COVID-19, establishment and maintenance of personal hygiene program, and provision of appropriate personal protective equipment, including face masks. The direction also encourages employers to systematically phase in workers at the various mines. Startup procedures must be developed in consultation with organized labor, which will be submitted to the department prior to ramping up operations. On the tourism sector, there is no part of the tourism industry globally that is not impacted negatively because of COVID-19. Travel bans, airline groundings, heightened restrictions to movement, not only, across, not only across borders, but also within our country, has meant that tourism-related activities are non-existent. As previously reported, and as part of government's intervention to mitigate the effects of COVID-19, the Department of Tourism opened an application portal for the COVID-19 Tourism Relief Fund to the value of 200 million. However, it is a matter of public knowledge that the department was served with court papers by both AfriForum and Solidarity in an attempt to set aside the scheme on grounds of its transformational characteristics as it upholds the broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act. In respect of the court, while business were still able to apply, the department has kept the processing of the application on hold. The department will be guided by the outcome of the court, but stands ready to support the businesses in distress. Thus far, over 10,000 applications were received and the court proceedings took place this morning and we're waiting the outcome from the court. We have commenced with we've commenced work with global, continental and national stakeholders to develop a post COVID tourism recovery strategy. Suffice suffice at this stage to say that the industry will be focusing on three phases survival, recovery and then prosperity. On labor and employment matters, government calls on all employers to apply for the COVID-19 benefits through the temporary employer employee relief scheme on behalf of their employees. To date, the UIF has received just over 103,000 applications from employers representing about 1.75 million employees. In total, the UIF 
has over 1.8 million employers registered on its database, representing more than 8 million workers. As of today, the cumulative amount paid since April 27 is 3.3 billion, just over 3.3 billion. Of the received applications, the UIF has processed 59,000 employers' applications, which means that more than 862,000 employees will receive their benefits. About 10,000 applications could not be processed due to errors, and the affected companies have been notified to correct their applications and resubmit. Some of the errors identified relate to incorrect banking details, making it impossible for payments to be processed. The UIF is working around the clock to meet the extraordinary volumes of requests for assistance presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. The UIF call center, which initially had 75 agents, has increased its capacity now, has 400 agents operating the toll-free number 0800-030-007. More call center agents will be added should the need arises. Furthermore, in terms of the department's work on guidelines to assist South African business, the guidelines will help employers identify risk level in the workplace and to determine what appropriate control measures to implement. It focuses on the engineering controls, administrative controls, safe work practice, and personal protective equipment. It includes installing high efficiency air filters and increasing ventilation rates in work environment, encouraging sick workers to stay at home, minimizing contact amongst, worker, amongst workers, clients, and customers by replacing face-to-face -face meetings with virtual communication, minimizing the number of workers on site at any given time through rotation or shift work and discontinue non-essential travel. Developing emergency communication plans, including a task team for answering workers' concerns and internet-based communication. Provide personal hygiene resources such as the no-touch refuse bins, hand soaps, alcohol-based hand wraps, disinfectants, and disposable towels and also provide gloves, goggles, goggles, face shields, face masks, gowns, apron, aprons, coats, overalls, hair and shoe covers, and respiratory protection where appropriate. In the event, sorry, in the period since the issuing of these guidelines, a clear picture has emerged about COVID-19 and the nature of hazards and precautions in the workplaces. That should be taken to minimize the risks. To this end, the department working with social partners at NETLEC has developed occupational health and safety directions, the purpose of which is to stimulate or stipulate measures that must be taken by employers in order to protect the health and safety of workers and the members of the public who enter the workplaces or are likely to be exposed to the activities. Under small business development, since COVID-19 relief measures were announced, 530 million rent was set aside to support SMMEs, and the Department of Small Business Development announced the SMME relief scheme to support payroll, rental, and utilities over three months. To date, the scheme has approved over 235 million rents, protecting over 11,000 jobs. The Spaza Shop Support Scheme, which has launch, was launched about a week ago, has already received over 104 applications, with 88 of them already approved. Having received improve, inputs on the risk-adjusted adjust, approach, government will consider them finalizing the directions for various sectors, and this will be followed up by media briefing once the regulations have been approved and publici publicized, and the ministers will, per sector, within the economic sector, 
explain what is to be done and the directives thereof. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I hand over to you, Minister Mtim. Uh, that was Minister Mamoloko Kupai Kubane speaking and summarizing what the cluster, economy cluster, has done in implementing the economic relief measures that the president spoke to. Uh, we will now take questions so that uh, we get from those that were listening, particularly our journalists, what areas of clarity they would like to be given by ministers who are here. Now, uh, do we have uh, online? No. We have, uh, I know, there are always questions on WhatsApp. Uh, uh, yes, Minister, and we've counted them today. We have counted them? Yes. And you can count? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> we have seven so far. Okay. Um, can we take them? Yes. Um, thank you, Minister. The first question, well, it's three questions from Charlotte at EWN. The first one is directed to Minister Mtembu in his capacity as Acting Minister of Communications. And the question is, um, is cell phone tracking already being used? If so, how m on how many occasions? And how many contacts has already has this technology helped trace? The second question is to the Minister of Tourism. Given the contribution of tourism to the DG GDP, are there plans to expand the targeted relief package for that sector? Please indicate on whether and how much has been dispersed so far. Then there's a question to the Minister of Labor. Um, there have been several complaints around the UIF process. For an example, some companies have applied for UIF on behalf of their employees. Um, they've, been, they've been paid out in a lump sum, but with no indication of how to apportion that sum. Are you aware of these issues and what are you doing to address them? Then there is a question from Vikas Berger from Nadvark Firentwantak to the Minister of Labor. Can you please clarify Will domestic workers be allowed to return to work on level four? And under what regulations and circumstances uh, will that be? Then there is a question from Debo Homonio from River, R Radio Riverside Community Radio Station, also to the Minister of Labor. Will employees and employers that apply through the UIF TRES receive 100% of their salaries if successful? And will it be a once-off assistance or a monthly assistance until the lockdown is lifted? And if it is ongoing, must an application be done on a monthly basis? Can I continue? So le let's hold it there. I know that there is now a person who wants to ask a question from our online service. Just wanted to say something on Sunday Mshengu, we are listening. All right, but anyway, I've got two questions. One to the minister. Mshengu, Mshengu, can you, uh, if you can, uh, put your radio off or your or television your off, so that we can hear you properly, uh, because we can't hear you properly. There is interference from your side, please. But we are ready to hear you. We hear you. Okay, then. How do I start? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, I'm asking you what to do. I'm okay now because my TV is in office. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't even get that one. Okay. Let me proceed to the questions. Uh, first of all, there is a question to the Minister of Small Business around you, you know what, you know what we will propose, Mshengu, because there is serious interference on your side. Let, let's come back to you and check again, because it has happened, this has happened before from your side, 
and you were able to deal with it, whatever it is that is interfering with our system. Let's answer the questions that have been asked for now. We will come back to you whilst you are checking around what could be interfering with our communication system. Maybe let's just start with the first question that was asked on the cell phone tracking. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, the minister that can answer, because that did uh, of all those that have come into contact with uh, people who are infected, is indeed the Minister of Health. Uh, we have so far not uh, shared notes on how, to what extent have we used this system to assist in the tracing and tracking. The sooner we have shared notes with the Minister of Health, uh, and he has given us the details thereof, we'll be able to come back and uh, respond to this question. Colleagues? Uh, Minister Ngasi. Is that fine? Well, I'm going to go to Spanish. Yes, sir. Yeah, for her. Yeah. Just um, <coughs> two questions. I didn't catch the, the other question, but I think it's going to be repeated. There are several complaints from some employers um, where companies have been paid out some lump sums. They do not know how to allocate them. I must just indicate that uh, you don't just pay money to a company. Those monies who are paying. Oh. Is it on now? Thank you. The, the issue about the lump sum, which employers cannot be able to allocate to the employees, they must just be honest. We don't just pay. We pay based on the payroll which has been submitted by the employer with all the figures. And we're not paying the whole amount. We're paying, and it's in the legislation, 38% because it is a relief. And we had budgeted for a period of three months. And then we'll see what will happen after three months. And uh, in terms of the tests for the company, if the company is going down and they are busy with some restructuring, um, that will be determined by the CCMA because they have to make submissions there and uh, particular processes and satisfy certain criteria which have been put there. But in relation to COVID, we think that we are on board, we are moving with the train, except that the employers must also play their role. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Minister Mamaloko. Am I audible? We can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, there was one question directed to me specifically relating to the Tourism Relief Fund. We have not distributed anything due to the court case. As soon as we do have a court outcome, we will start um, based on that outcome, then work on that. So. We committed that the minute we were interdicted, um, we were served with papers that would not distribute. But what we allowed was for applications to come through as a process, and we sought legal advice on that if we can continue to receive the applications we did, and we agreed that we will not disperse the funds. Once we have the outcome, we were promised today by court that the outcome should be, the judge said she should be able to give us the outcome before Friday or by Friday latest. So once that is known, and then we'll be able to. So it, it answers both how much we've been able to distribute and where, so we've not distributed anything. In terms of going forward, um, we are not able to engage with Treasury in terms of reprioritization or even allocation of new relief fund because Treasury, what they look for is your capacity to spend. So because we've not spent what is currently allocated as um, the 200 million, we are not even able to engage with tre Treasury for further um, relief funds. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Minister Mantaj, any question for you? None. Okay. Minister Small Business, Minister Kumbut. Oh, the question, oh, we still need to get to the question. <laughs> yeah. 
Can, can we go back to Zitzbu? Let, let, let Mshengu. Can we go back to Mshengu and get his question? Mshengu, please. Mshengu, are you there? Who are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Uh, we, we will seem to be we, better we will seem now. We to be better now. All right, let me go ahead then. Thank you. Uh, my question Thank you. is, Minister of Small Business, uh, Minister Chavini, uh, in, in the initial meeting, there was a mention of uh, Spanish shops, 104 applications, I think, if I had correctly, and 84 approved. Can we get the details of the monetary value of those uh, that have been approved? Also, this number seems to be too low, given, uh, you know, the many Spanish shops in this particular country. How many Spanish shops in terms of those that are registered are there in the database of the department. Then we, we have heard you very well. Next time, Shengu, do us a favor. Just look around what will interfere with our communication with you and shut that off so that we can hear you as clearly as we have done now. Minister. Minister Nchabeni. Thank you. Uh, there's puzzle shops that have been approved, uh, 104, uh, uh, 88 out of the 104. The monetary value is that each puzzle shop gets a working capital investment of 3.5, which they use. And also they get another 3.5 thousand rents for revolving credit, which they'll use at the pre-selected wholesalers. What is also important is that if this puzzle shop chooses to get the full amount of 7,000 as revolving credit, they can do that. Why the number is too low, we've just opened, but given the uh, restriction of movement, we are using the net, we have partnered with NetBank, so the accessing of NetBank branches, because they are not working normal working hours, it's, uh, it's, it has proven a challenge, though they are using also the boxer stores. But we're working with NetBank to improve that coverage. We are also engaging with the post office to make sure that we can then use the postal uh, offices for the registration of most puzzle shops. The database does not reside within the Department of uh, Small Business Development as the licensing or permitting of puzzle shop is the responsibility of municipalities. We are working with municipalities. We've, they've got a database of over 130,000 approved uh, puzzle shops to trade within the country. So we are working with municipalities to make sure that the uh, puzzle shops can access the scheme. The LED offices of municipalities will uh, kick in within uh, this week or next week to directly call the puzzle shops within their database to apply the uh, for the scheme and also to support them to complete the application forms. And this is in line with our partnership with Salga and we must say we are grateful and we must extend our appreciation to NetBank and in, the, in terms of the partnership, but also that they've availed the Boxer, their de funding desk at Boxer stores across the country for, to enable our reach. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chavani. We will, I know that there is some asking the last question to the right minister, but let's leave it for now. I think they have asked it to a wrong minister, but I think there is a right minister who will answer that. Oh, oh it's joined. Okay. Uh, who wants to start? Uh, Mr. Mam Mamluko. Okay. Um, just to indicate colleagues that final details in terms of um, level four will be announced after the NCC has processed and a special media briefing will be done. So those details of who, because remember there was a process where Minister Patel and Minister Lamini Zuma announced and released the document for public consultation. Work is being done, 
all of us are working around the clock. Once that work is done, and then it will be announced. So with those you know who operated what level, whether it's doctors, which level of doctors are operating there. So those details will be announced once the work is done. Um, whether what was announced um, last week still remains uh, or whether it changes. So we can't say in this media briefing that we're waiting for that final process with the input. Um, with regards to the hotels, no hotel is supposed to be received. Here. But did you hear what, what she was saying before? Okay, I was then. explaining that the details of level 4 can hear. Is it fine? Okay. I was explaining that the details of what activities which sectors are going to operate at level 4 will be announced once the process has been finalized. Minister Damien is much together with Minister Patel released the document during the media briefing um, and called for inputs. Work is being done in the background to ensure that work is being processed once it's finalized through NCC National Command Council. Communication will be done to say these are the final activities that will happen under level four. So that's the first thing. Coming to hotels, the second question. Okay. Coming to hotels, the second question that has been asked is to indicate that no hotels are supposed to be receiving any new clients or patrons unless if for it's for purposes of quarantine or support for essential services. We've been currently ensuring. Is it fine? We've been currently supporting the sector in terms of ensuring that those who are are supporting. Uh, Minister, mm -hmm. why don't we just use this platform? Okay. I think let's use this platform to take us back online then. Uh, because I don't know why we. Waiting for a signal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll start again. Uh, okay. Yeah, just to start again, indicating the questions about um, what activities ta will take place under level four would want to reiterate that the process has not been concluded. Once the process has been concluded, a communication will be done. Um, you'd note that uh, last week when Minister Lamini Zuma and Minister Patel issued the um, level four guidelines to say these are proposed activities, a process of public consultation was opened. Currently, the work is being done in the background. Once the NCC finalizes, which activities will happen, including whether there are doctors that are going to operate, because the question was related to whether uh, we'll have doctors other than those in the um, emergencies operating. Those will be processed and communication will be done. Coming to the issue of hotels, I want to in indicate that no hotel 
is supposed to be operational during now because the only activities that happens with hotels now or any facilities such as accommodation, BNBs and all that, they are only open for the purposes of quarantine or support for essential services. We work together with the sector to ensure that those who are to operate in support of essential services or quarantine do get a letter of permission that when the police visits their premises, they are able to issue. So I want to reiterate and I want to appeal to members of our sector, please don't find yourself in violation with our regulation or our laws. So that is very important. So no one should be um, receiving guests that are not approved as part of essential services. I think those are the things that I wanted to respond to. Thank you. Oh, sorry, the last one that was meant, was asked to Minister Nchabeni, which affects um, the restaurants and also the issues. The restaurants are supported through the Tourism Relief Fund. If you look at the requirement, it does cover restaurants. But also, those who are part of the SMM issue, we talk about the Shishanyamas in the townships. They fall under that um, SMME relief as well. So there is an overlap in terms of that, but we do have a very way of categorizing. There has been a call to say since proposals of going forward are not going to be sufficient to support this sector that employs a number of people, uh, others have been calling for more relief fund to come especially for the restaurants. We have listened to that. We will process it in government and also engage with national treasury. If we do have positive news, we'll come back and address the nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we now call on the Minister of Labor and Employment, Nice to come here. I think the first question uh, Minister Kupayangubane has answered it. Just mm -hmm. on the question of any support measures for companies less than 10, the, there's a package of measures which we are working on as the SMME department together with uh, employment and labor. And once those measures we are ready with, we are going to make uh, the announcements and I guess in the next meeting we'll be able to, to do that. Maybe the minister can be able to confirm that. Thank you. Minister Njaveni, come and speak on both restaurants that belong to your sector and also the question that uh, the minister said that we are working together on. Th thank you. In, in terms of the restaurants, we, um, when the announcement has been made in, uh, in terms of the phased approach of what's happening with restaurants, together with the Minister of Tourism, we are going to announce the support mechanisms to, to support the restaurants in how they operate, including the Shisanyamas in the township and all other people who cook in the township and rural areas. The second issue, uh, Minister... Uh, and Nancy has indicated that we are working on support measures for SMMEs jointly. It's true, because in the SMME relief that was spoken about earlier, we include supporting the pay, uh, payroll on those that are not covered by the URF. But in that space, that is for those who employees that are less than 10. But in that space, we are engaging with the Department of Labor and URF so that we can then have a common approach of how to access that kitty. But there are also other initiatives that we are finalizing together with the Department of Labor. I think within this week or next week latest, we should be able to announce those schemes that deal with the, the SMMEs directly, which are supported by both ourselves and the Department of Labor as part of making sure that as they go back to business, they can then function effectively, but also as the lockdown is impacting them, they can their chances of survival remains greater. I just needed to confirm that. Thank you. Uh, so thank, thank you, Ministers. 
We will continue. Do we have? We do have a question online. The question is coming from Asiri Global from Capital Live. Go for it, Asiri. Uh, thank you so much, Karabo. Uh, Minister, some of the ministers from Capital Live, as uh, Karabo said, I have a question. I have two questions. In fact, the first question goes to uh, the acting minister of communications, uh, Mr. Mtembo. Uh, 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 I just want to quickly ask: Did you perhaps maybe spoke or heard a word from uh, Multi Choice DSTV uh, for? maybe giving that lines a discount just like what we saw in other African con countries like Kenya where they get a 75% discount due to this uh, situation. Have you heard anything or are you talking to them uh, for South African clients because I saw a number of people complaining about that. Then number two is the question that goes to the small business development minister. Uh, and if you can remember, I asked you this question before uh, at ECO that there are small businesses that are complying on certain things and they don't comply on certain things. They normally don't comply on the UIF part because we'll get it's a one person business or two people business like your event companies. Sometimes they hire people temporarily and they don't really register for the UIF. Now, there is this situation, all events are canceled, internet cafes are closed. These businesses tried to apply uh, on your website, and they were fed to five different uh, websites that if they go to each website, most of them, they don't qualify. Like the CIPA receives these two uh, specific kinds of businesses which are, that I mentioned, they don't qualify on those categories that you have there. What do they do in this, situ in this situation in order to get the relief as well? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have anything on the WhatsApp channel? The next question is from Arthur of Gadget.co.za to the Minister of Labor. What relief is there for freelance workers who typically, who typically do not earn, who typically earn from job to job, usually don't pay UIF and are not part of the social grant system? They have, um, they have, they seem to have fallen through the cracks, and many report. Um, being rejected by the relief portals. Then there is a question from Nazir of from Glow TV. Are attorneys and accountants allowed to go back to work and consult clients on a general basis? Um, also, has there been any inter intervention to demand that cell phone providers drastically reduce data prices during the lockdown period? Then there's a question from Andy Siwe Makinana of the Sunday Times. How many submissions were received in relation to these level four regulations? And does government go through each one of them? How is this done in such a short space of time? The last question is from Vicious Ber Vickers Berger from Netwerk Firentwantach, and it's to any relevant minister. Can you advise on the situation of tenants whose lease contract has expired and arranged to move into a different residence as of the 1st of May? Will they be allowed to do so? Also, regarding regulations of, um, also regarding the regulation, uh, regarding regulations of no tenants being allowed to be evicted, should people who plan to move stay in their current place of residence even when their lease, leases have expired? I don't know who wants to start, but we better come here. Yeah. Better come here. Why is she still coming? There's been a question asked whether the telcos, have we engaged with them to reduce their subscription fees uh, for this period? You will know that uh, there are a number of data service providers who have reduced their fees, uh, but we will continue, of course, to engage with them. There are a number who have reduced their fees, uh, which the South Africans are quite aware of. Somebody then referred to multi-choice that under these circumstances, can the subscription fees be reduced? We have not engaged because we have not been asked to engage 
a multi-choice on behalf of those that are subscribing. But it's a point that uh, we can take through another avenue. Those who are not working, what relief can multi-choice and other companies that will not only apply to multi-choice, that will apply to any other companies that have got people subscribing to their services. Can we have relief for a few months under this COVID regime whilst people are trying to find some work, whilst people themselves are trying to get some relief? So that question from that angle, we are prepared to engage with these service providers, these broadcast service providers and other service providers so that under these circumstances, can we have a subscriber holiday for those that are in distress? Uh, Minister Mamluk. Okay. Um, as I said earlier on, I think I need to repeat. The briefing relating to level four regulations will be done later because the work is not yet done um, under Minister Lamini Zuma. So if you noted when the press briefing was done, is that deadline for submission was Monday, 12 o'clock. After that, processing of those applications was being done. So that's where we are. Once that has been done, presented to NCC, NCC processed it, then through Minister Mtembu, a media briefing will be arranged for an outcome of what is the final regulations, including the activities that to take place under level four. Out of that, if you remember last time how we did that, then each minister will then outline step by step what, what is to happen within their sectors. We are not yet there. Today we were given, we are here as the economic cluster, to give an update on what we had publicly committed as part of support for those in distress in terms of businesses and individual as workers. So we are there and that's the update we are here for. Once we are done with the process from the NCC, Minister Mtim will call that media briefing and a delegation will come and brief the nation on those. So I thought it's important, including the issue of people who are going to be encouraged to stay at home. Remember, there's been an issue around that those who are vulnerable in society are senior citizens and those who have, um, what is it called? Immobility. So that as well will be explained as we do level four, briefing as members of cabinet. I thought that is covering so that at least it's clear that this issue uh, will be coming to the nation. It's still in process. Thank you very much, Minister. Minister Nessie. Thank you, Chairperson. When we're talking about the risk assessment, which must be undertaken by companies to adapt the provisions of the direction which or directive we're giving to the specific requirements of the individual places. We are saying they must look also into the issues of occupational health and, and safety. And uh, employers, they know the profiles. They know the profiles of their employees. Therefore, they must take into consideration all these issues of age and say how they are going to adapt uh, their companies. For instance, one of the issues has been, how do you adapt that some of the workers during this particular period can be able to work uh, from home? So we think that that would be considered. Secondly, um, on the issue of the freelance workers, unfortunately with the current legislation, they fall outside. We can't do something illegal. Maybe what we're going to do is 
um, after this, we will have to relook at it in terms of our legislative amendments and start a debate about that. Um, on the small businesses not complying with the UIF, we need those companies to make arrangements with the UIF so that they can register and also acknowledge the debt that they will pay. Some have already started that. They acknowledge their debt, but later on, once they are up and running, they've been able to recover. They are going to pay their debt so that we give the benefit to the workers because we should not punish the workers because of sometimes irresponsible employers. That's what we are saying. And um, if they had been registered as, as companies, they could be eligible for the, 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 the government benefit or government relief scheme, provided they've registered as, as, as companies. We sit with them, we interact with them, and they were able to, to help them. Njalo Velas. We, we, we know that there is another press briefing uh, that will be starting soon. Uh, so we need to wrap up. I hope that there are no questions that you have. That there are no questions. Oh, that's good. Oh, you want to answer, sir? Sorry. Minister Njaveni, my, my apologies. So, hey, our timing is quite good. Uh, uh, th thank you. It's just to add on what Minister Nessie has, has spoken about. We have agreed with the UIF and the Department of Labor that those SMMEs who have who had not registered for UIF or those who had registered their employees for UIF but not honored their payments with UIF, we are going to pass them over to UIF for them to be to, to do the acknowledgement of debt and also to the be paid in terms of payroll assistance on our part and TERS on the part of UIF. And we have said on our part, given that the internet cafes are closed, we are re requesting that SMMEs who do not have access to printers, photocopiers, and scanners in their homes, they must uh, take photographs using their phones. We will use our network of uh, CEDA uh, in our regions and also the LED units of municipalities to make sure that we've got the, re uh, the necessary documentation when they've, uh, when they've been considered for application. Because we've got, it will be just to verify that the documentation is it's, it's correct. And um, the other thing maybe on the not freelancers per se, we, part of the schemes we are finalizing with the Department of Labor is how do we support what we call artisanal businesses and tradesmen, and that's the scheme that we're going to talk about later. But on our part, we are also, we've also finalized the scheme to support bakeries and confectionaries, and we're going to announce the details on how that is done, and also to support the automotive aftermarket sales. We'll announce that, how that will be done. But uh, with that, I think it's all on our part. Thank you. To our colleagues, thank you very much for this press briefing. Mkwati, uh, Minister Mamuluku, Minister Nwesi, Minister Nchaveni, thank you very much for speaking to our people on what we are doing uh, in relation to what the President announced. But can we, in that vein, appeal to employers there are very few employers who are applying for this on behalf of their workers and employees for this UIF relief benefit. We are asking them to do so, particularly in the farming sector and in the domestic sector. Uh, we are really appealing to all our employers to use this facility because there are vulnerable workers who could benefit from this facility, but they can't because employers are not taking advantage on behalf of their employees of this UIF benefit scheme. Uh, but having said that, to Abase Makaya and everybody who has been listening to this broadcast, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. 
for listening to us. We will continue uh, updating the nation on what steps government is taking uh, to implement what the president has spoken to. Uh, we will come back to you on education. We will come back to you on the social cluster, on the issues of increased grants and uh, other related uh, uh, payments of distress to our people. We will definitely come back to you on those issues. Uh, but for now, thank you and thank you very much for listening to us. This uh, meeting is now adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.